The process of verifying a signature using Solidity is in four steps. First, you have the message to sign, and then you hash the message. Next, you would sign the message. This will be done off-chain. This will not be done inside the smart contract. So this will be done off-chain using your wallet. In the last step, you can verify the signature inside the smart contract by calling the function ecRecover, passing in the hash of the message and the signature. This function will return a signer. And you can check that the signer that was returned from this function, ecRecover, is actually equal to the true signer that signed the message. I'm going to show you how to verify a signature inside Solidity. The first thing that we'll do is create a function called verify, which will take in a message, signature, and the signer, and verify that the signature is valid. Along the way, we'll need to create some internal functions, so we'll do that after we create the main function, verify. So let's get started. I'll create the function by typing function verify. It's going to take in several inputs, address of the signer. This will be the address that we expect EC Recover to return. Next will be the message that we're signing. For this example, we'll keep it simple and we'll sign a string message. So I'll say string memory message. The last input will be the signature. So it'll be bytes memory sig. We'll make this function external, peer, and it will return a boolean. If the signature is valid and the signer that was returned by EC Recover is actually equal to the signer from the input, then it will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. So as outlined in the first step, the first thing that we will do is hash the message. For hashing the message, we will use catchact 256 and the hash returned by catchact 256 is bytes32. And we'll name this variable message hash is equal to get message hash. This will be a function that we'll write out later. Basically, it will do a catchact 256 of the input. The input will be the string message that we pass as an input to the function verify. Now, when we actually sign the message off chain, the message that is signed is not message hash. This hash that is actually signed is also bytes32, and we will name it if signed message hash is equal to get if signed message hash, and then we will pass in the message hash from step one. We have not defined this function yet, but we will do it later. For the last step, we'll take this if signed message hash, verify it with the signature. This will recover the signer, so we'll check that the signer that was returned is equal to the signer from the input. We'll define this function later, but for now we'll say recover, passing in the if signed message hash, and also the signature, and then we'll compare it with the signer from the input, and then we'll return this. This completes the function verify, and this will be the main function that we're going to be calling to verify a signature of the message. We will now write the code for get message hash, get if sign message hash, and the function recover. Let's start with get message hash. The function get message hash will take in a single input, a string memory message. We will make this function public. This function will be peer, and it will return bytes32 of the hash of the message. Inside this function, we will simply return the catchact 256 of abi.encode packed message. Next, we will write the function for get if sign message hash. I'll copy this function, paste it here. And then rename this function to get if signed message hash. The input to this function will be bytes32 of message hash. So I'll also change the input to message hash. Earlier I said that when we actually sign the message hash, this hash will be actually prefixed with some strings and then hashed again. And that will be the actual message that is signed. 
The string that is prefixed to message hash is some string with the message ethereum sign message followed by the length of the message bytes 32, so the length of the message 32. We append the actual message hash and then take the catch act 256 of this whole string. So this is the actual message that is signed when you sign a message off chain. Once we have the actual message that is signed, the if sign message, we will now write the function called recover that will take the if sign message and signature and recover the signer from these two inputs. The function recover will take two inputs, bytes 32 of if sign message hash and bytes memory of the signature. For this example, we will make this function public. This function will be peer, and it will return the signer recovered from the signature and the e signed message hash. So we will type returns address. From the signature, the first thing that we need to do is split the signature into three parts. So we will say bytes 32 r bytes 32 s and uint 8 b is equal to an internal function called split which we will define later passing in the signature. The R and S over here are cryptographic parameters used for digital signatures and the parameter B is something unique to Ethereum. We won't need to worry what all of these parameters mean. All we need to do with these parameters is pass it to the function called EC recover passing in the message that was signed, which will be if sign message hash, and then passing in b, r, and s. This is a function available in Solidity, so we will now have to define this function. This function returns the address of the signer given the signed message and these parameters. So we will return the signer by typing return. And the last function that we will write is split. How do we split the signature into these three parameters? So I'll name the function split it's going to take in bytes memory sig for the input we'll make this function internal peer and it's going to return three parameters so we'll type returns bytes 32r bytes 32s and uint 8b we'll do a quick check on the signature and make sure that the signature length is equal to 65 why is it 65? Well, it is because bytes 32 is 32 length. The next bytes 32 is another 32 length. And uint 8 is one byte, which is one length. 32 plus 32 plus one is equal to 65. So we'll type require sig.length is equal to 65. And if it is not, we'll throw our message saying invalid signature length. Once we know that the signature length is equal to 65, we'll get the parameters for RSB from the signature sig. And to do that, we'll use assembly. So I'll type assembly. Now sig is a dynamic data. This is because it has a variable length. And for dynamic data type, the first 32 bytes stores the length of the data. That's one thing to remember here. And the other important thing to remember here is that this variable sig is not the actual signature. It is a pointer to where the signature is stored in memory. So with that in mind, we can get the value of r by typing r assigned to mload. This will load to memory 32 bytes from the pointer that we provide into this input. The first 32 bytes of sig is the length of the sig, so we'll need to skip it by typing add to the pointer of sig 32. Again, here we're saying that from the pointer of sig, skip the first 32 byte because it holds the length of the array. After we skip the first 32 bytes, the value for r is stored in the next 32 bytes. Next, we'll get the value for s by saying s assigned to mload, so load from memory, add, to the pointer of sig, skip the first 32 because it stores the length, and also skip the next 32 because it holds the value for r. 32 plus 32 is 64. 
you'll do something similar for the value of b as well. So you say b assign to load from memory, add to the pointer of sig. We want to skip the first 64 plus another 32, which stores the value of s. So we'll say 96. And then for the value of b, we don't need 32 bytes. We only need the first byte. So we'll say byte, get the first byte from the 32 bytes after 96. Now notice that I don't have to type return R, S, and B. This is because the return is implicit. We named our return values here, and then we assigned it here. So Solidity will implicitly return these values. We're now done with this function, and this completes this contract. Let's now deploy this contract and actually sign some message and verify it. I'll compile the contract by hitting compile sig, then deploy the contract, scroll down, and then open the contract. For the message that we're signing, we'll say it is secret message, and then we'll get the message hash. So this will be the message that we're going to be signing using MetaMask. I'll open my browser console by typing F12, and then we'll enable MetaMask by typing Ethereum dot enable. This will return a promise. I'll open the promise and make sure that it is fulfilled, meaning that there was no error opening MetaMask. I'll assign an account that I'm going to be using to a variable named account. This is the account that I'm going to be using to sign the message. The message that I'm going to be signing is a hash equal to, it will be this hash over here. And to sign the message inside the browser console, I'll type ethereum.request. The method that I'm going to call is personal sign. And the parameters that I'm going to pass is the account and the hash. And then hit enter. I'll sign the message. And this will return a promise again. If I open it, I can see here that this is the signature. Once we have the signature, we can now call recover and verify. To call recover, we'll need to pass in the if sign message hash. So we'll take this hash, copy it, paste it here, and then call if sign message. So this will be the message hash that we'll need to pass to the function recover to recover the signer. The function recover takes in two parameters, if sign message hash and the signature. So I'll copy the if sign message hash from here paste it here, and for the signature, we'll copy it from the browser console signature. Copy it, paste it here, and then call. Scroll down, and the function recover return this address over here. And if you look at the browser console over here, you can see that the account matches the signer that was recovered. So now if you call verify, for the signer, we'll again paste the address of the signer. The message that we signed was secret message and the signature, we will get it from the browser console, paste it, call, scroll down, and the signature checks out. Now just to show you that this function is working correctly, I'm going to change the message a little bit, then call, and it returns false. Likewise, if I fix the message and maybe change the signature a little bit, for example, change the first five to one and then call. Again, it returns false. To give you a better idea why it is returning false, we'll call the function recover. When we change the message, for example, say secret messages and then call get message hash, this will change the hash. And if I were to provide this hash into if sign message and then call if sign message, this will change the if sign message hash. And if I were to put this inside here, then the recovered address will be not equal to the actual signer. And just to show you this, I'm going to change a valid if sign message hash to something else by changing the first nine to a one. And then if I call, notice that the address changed. The signer that was recovered is not equal to the actual signer. I'll fix the if sign message hash. The other case where the verification fails is if the signature is invalid. Here we have a valid signature, and I'm going to invalidate this signature by changing some of the input. For example, changing the first 5 to a 1 again, then calling call. Again, notice that the signer that was returned is not equal to the actual signer.
LISC is organizing the second edition of Blockchain Day, which will be one of the official events during Berlin Blockchain Week. Everybody is invited. Come and share your passion for developing blockchain applications. Blockchain Day is a special event for both developers and Web3 enthusiasts where they can learn more about the space and discover the most exciting insights from the industry. The event takes place on Wednesday, September 14th at the LISC Center in Berlin. Expect panel discussions on interoperability with Web3 professionals, get insights from blockchain enthusiasts and learn from investors' background. Plus, get ready for an exciting dive into LISC SDK. Do an evening filled with blockchain knowledge sharing and networking combined with some food and refreshments. It's a free event. To participate, you just need to register on the Meetup page, link in the description. Don't wait, take this opportunity to join the Berlin blockchain scene on Blockchain Day.